Western Bears have been confirmed to enter the NRL in 2027, and if you watch my Where Should the NRL's 18th Team Be video, you would know that I've thought Perth is the right option from the very start. The NRL are expected to announce it officially at the end of the season, once they've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's, but this thing is happening. I'm going to take you through what the club will look like, and players that they may potentially sign for their first season. According to the Daily Telegraph, who broke this story, there's a number of conditions in the agreement between the North Sydney Bears and the Western Bids officials. The first is that the team will have a logo that is an adaptation of the traditional North Sydney Bears logo. I reckon that's definitely a good call. This traditional Bears logo is just unfortunately a bit too dated to work for a modern NRL team. But at the same time, it's important to be recognisable from the original Bears if the Western Bears are looking to capture old North Sydney fans when they play games on the East Coast. And on that note, probably the most recognisable thing about the North Sydney Bears was their iconic red and black colour scheme. The Telegraph confirms that the three main colours for this Western Bears team will be red, black and white which unfortunately puts an end to the NRL aspirations of the Amsterdam Cobras. Ah, uh, you really thought I was going to go a whole video without mentioning International Rugby League? No chance. But they do say that there'll be a hint of yellow in the Western Bears kit as well. Now, yellow was not a colour that the North Sydney Bears traditionally wore, but it was a colour that the Western Reds wore. From the sounds of it, it's a jersey that will pay homage to the tradition of the North Sydney Bears, as well as the tradition of Rugby League in Western Australia. Now one key concern that I had around attaching the Bears to any potential bid was that they'd focus too much on the old North Sydney area, and not enough on where the team is actually based. Luckily it looks like the organisers shared my concerns, because according to the article it looks like they'll only take one home game per season back to Sydney. Ideally, they want that game to be played against the Sea Eagles, who are the traditional rivals of the Bears, so that makes a lot of sense. Personally, I'd fully commit to the whole heritage aspect of that fixture and play that game at North Sydney Oval, a venue that has as much a piece in rugby league history as the likes of Leichhardt or Brookvale. But given the commercial potential of that fixture, it looks like they may play that game at Allianz Stadium instead. Either way, it's a fixture that I reckon will become an absolute showpiece event of the NRL regular season. And to make things even more appealing for the old rugby league traditionalists, it's reported that the Western Bears will wear traditional North Sydney Bears kits for that fixture. Sydney-based fans will also be treated to one preseason game every season at North Sydney Oval, and the North Sydney Bears themselves will continue to play in the New South Wales Cup as the feeder team for the Western Bears. Those fans will also obviously have numerous opportunities across the season to see their team play in away games in Sydney. Now in terms of players that they could recruit, there's a number of absolute stars off contract in 2026 that the Bears could sign for 2027. But the first thing any player wants to know when they're signing a contract is who the coach is going to be. To me there's an obvious choice for the head coaching role of the Western Bears and I would be surprised if they go with anyone other than this guy. Brad Arthur showed in his time with Parramatta that he is very good at building a club from the ground up. And even at the end of his tenure for the Eels, the players spoke absolutely glowingly of their time with him and very positively about what he did for them as a group. Not to mention that there's a logical link there in that Arthur's wife is from Perth and all her family live there. Perth is a very isolated place in relation to the west of Australia and they pride themselves on that. So having a support network there around the coach would be a huge plus for the Bears. In terms of players that they could recruit, I'll look to the Dolphins who, when they entered the competition, recruited a number of veterans that had come from very good systems, namely Felice Kalfusi and the Bromwich Brothers. When you're looking to start up a new franchise, I think those veteran players who set the standard are vital. On that note, Angus Crichton will be coming off contract, aged 31, and by that point, it's quite likely that the Roosters will be looking to prioritise the long-term futures of Siwa Wong and Egan Butcher over potentially re-signing Crichton. That's a signing I could definitely see happening if the Bears can offer him more money than the Roosters. Other veterans include Ryan Madison and Junior Paolo, who will be 32 and 33 respectively. Both have experience at the top level and would be particularly good signings if Brad Arthur is the coach. Then you've got Viliami Kikau too, he'll be 32 years of age, having won two premierships with the Panthers, and played a very key role in developing what looks like a positive Bulldogs culture. That foundation squad is crucial to setting the tone and culture of a franchise. And I do reckon all those guys would contribute to that culture in a positive way. 
In terms of real statement signings, if I were the Melbourne Storm, I'd be a little bit concerned about that 2027 date. The Bears will be cashed up, and both Harry Grant and Jerome Hughes come off contract at that point. Now Grant, I'm not as worried about because he's the club captain and he hasn't won a premiership with them yet, but Hughes has, and he'll be 32 at that point in his career. He's a player who only really would have started earning highly in the last five or so seasons, so the temptation to finish out his career on big money at a new franchise could be very hard to resist. And really, I don't think you could hold it against him for going after what is worth. Another team who may have to choose between two guys is the Titans, who have both Jaden Campbell and Keanu Kinney coming off contract at the time when the Bears will be signing players. If a guy like Keanu Kinney can be to the Bears what Hamiso Tabuafido has been to the Dolphins, it would do wonders for the development of that franchise. And lastly, Keon Kalomatangi will be 29 years old and coming off contract. Imagine if the Bears are able to pair the likes of him with Miliami Kikau or Angus Crichton in their first season. There are a few other stars off contract, but most of them I expect will retire at that point and some others like Payne Haas or Blake Braley I expect to probably just re-sign with their current clubs. I reckon that there's definitely enough talent there to put together a competitive NRL side, especially when you combine it with the talent that will be developed over the next few seasons in the NRL. They'll have to get their recruitment process absolutely right though. When the Dolphins came in, we quickly saw the likes of Kalen Ponga and Cameron Munster re-sign with their clubs instead of heading up north on much bigger money. And the Dolphins had the allure of Wayne Bennett. So lots of signing potential for the Bears, but they're going to have some work to do. The Bears have the potential to be an absolutely brilliant asset to the game. Finally, we've re-established a bit of a foothold in the west coast of Australia, and we get to reward fans like the ones who showed up to that Dolphins vs Roosters game the other week. I understand the passion of fans in other areas, particularly PNG, who wanted to see themselves rewarded with an NRL license instead. But I always go back to the same point. This is an expansion team. It only makes sense to put it in a place where the total number of NRL fans can expand. And I'd argue that there are very few places with as much potential for that to happen than in Perth.